Uh, how was that you asked that, Anthony? It was like, well, do we? Do we also include the, uh, the thickness of the piece? Right, but, and, it's, and it's really not, in this case, we're not going to be dealing with the thickness again. But what we are doing now, and I think in some books I actually call this double shear, when you're dealing with a clevis like that, or in this case they're called an implement hitch, but it's a clevis situation, you're dealing with two times the shear. The area that you're dealing with is two times, isn't it? Okay. It's one bolt, but you have to make it fail in two places for this to for this thing to come apart. That makes sense? It has to fail, if you've got this situation going on here, it has to fail up and down on this, on my finger on to your right. It has to fail on both of those planes before it'll come out, won't it? Both, you know, it has to break connection on the top and the bottom before it comes out. If it breaks connection on the, on the top, it's still gonna hold until it breaks on that bottom. See, so if you use that, that illustration of, yeah, you got your fingers interlocked on that one finger and then you bring the top one off, the bottom one's still holding, then once it shears, then that can all come apart. So you have to overcome two planes now. So it's, in effect, you're doing like a, a double bolt, aren't you? It's like putting two bolts in there on, on just a double plane, so. It's a stronger setup. So let's see. So that, that's an example problem 913. It says the rod shown in that figure is supported by or is to support a load of 20,000 pounds. The material of which the rod is to be made will be a steel designated by the uh, AISI uh, 1020. So that's like a cold rolled uh, high, uh, carbon steel. The steel has an allowable shear stress of 7,500 PSI. Determine the required diameter and select the diameter to use, assuming the bar diameters are available in eighth inch increments. Okay. So if you look at that, they found the area, or well, to find the area, it's the force divided by the allowable shear stress well, we were given the allowable shear stress was 7,500 PSI, right? That's given. We're given that it's 20,000 pounds, but since you've got two of them, you divide it by two. It's one pin, but you've got two shear areas. So you divide that by two. And it says that we need to have uh, an area that is 1.33 square inches. Well, then you would have to go back to that manufacturer's data. Oh, and note, uh, since the area is pi d squared divided by 4, or 0.7854 d squared, the required diameter is calculated from the area divided by that 0.7854 and take the square root of that. So ultimately, we need a diameter of 1.3 for our diameter. Note then you go back to the charts that you would be supplied and if it's 1.3 you would have to go and find a 1 and 3 8 inch diameter rod. Again it was it was given to you in eighth inch increments right? They said all the bolts you can get are eighth inch increments so you don't have to go back into to a chart I need to overcome 1.3. The next eighth inch increment beyond 1.3 is 1.375, which is 1 and 3 eighths. So that's where they came up with that 1 and 3 eighths. You have to be bigger than 1.3. The next eighth inch increment is 1 and 3 eighths, which happens to be 1.375, which is larger than 1.3, right? If they had said, well, you can only buy these bolts in half inch increments, then you would have had to go and buy a one and a half inch bolt. And when you start getting into to larger diameters like that, that's possible. You may not be able to get eighth inch increment.
in which case then you'd have to go up to an inch and a half. So depending on what the problem says, you would have to adjust accordingly, wouldn't you? Okay. You have to start using your brilliant deduction techniques now. You have to look at what's given and what they want, and you have to start using the brain power to say, okay, if this, then that. It's just like a program that you would be writing in basic programming. Do you guys even do any programming classes now? In high school. No, I mean here. See, used to be you. No, nah, used to be you had to have a programming language, and we did basic. And you have a lot of a lot of conditions. If this, then that. Well, that's what you got going on here. If this condition is met, then based on something else, I go in there and do that. We kind of do that in digital systems. Digital systems. Mm -hmm. Are you one of those EM EM geek guys? Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> See, my, I use my brilliant deduction to figure that out. As, as engineering technicians, that's what you're going to have to start doing. You have to start thinking for yourself. And I'm getting real nervous that sometimes you're not doing that. Okay? You can't depend on somebody else all the time. you got to start thinking. Well, what else? So we have to double that, right? Keep that in mind. If you see that clevis type situation going on there, you have to double that or divide the force by two in that situation. Okay. Is a Which is essentially the same thing that we just did with the implement, right? But the clevis connection, that's that's just what that's a connection that is already determined that's what we're going to call it out in the real world okay on that particular problem which one is that oh i was thinking it was the and on example 912 sorry about that I'd, on that example basically what they're doing is they're trying to figure out uh what what the shear stress is and then they do, they say, okay, so you figure out what the shear stress is for uh, the 19 millimeter bolt, and then figure out what it would be for a 16 millimeter bolt, and tell me the difference between the two. So in that case, the 19 millimeter bolt, uh, you can figure out the area for that, right? It's 284 square millimeters, yeah, square millimeters. And you're given that you, uh, have 50 kilonewtons force transmitted to that uh, drawbar and the shear in that's going to be half of that so you divide that number by two so you have 25 kilonewtons but then you change that into newtons and you're dealing with square millimeters you divide the 25 times 10 to the third newtons by the 284 square millimeters you end up with 88 newtons per square millimeter, or 88 megapascals. Then you went and said, okay, we needed a 16 millimeter bolt. What's the shear gonna be in that? And does that make sense? That it's gonna have more shear stress on a smaller diameter bolt? Probably does, doesn't it? Because the area is smaller. So it's, not gonna, it's gonna have more shear stress involved there. Again, think in terms of uh, the other day I said use your finger, but if you just push your finger on your jaw anywhere, and but then you put three or four on there, it's not going to hurt near as much. And in fact, when you go to a, a masseuse, it feels like they're just jamming that thumb right into you. And, and I know they're not, but that's what it feels like. And it's like a small area or a needle. Your needles, you've all gotten shots, right? Small needle goes in pretty easy, doesn't it? Those big gauge needles with the hollow, oh my goodness. Killer. Exa perfect example of, you know, small, 
yeah, it'll get through there a lot easier, but there's more sh there's more stress involved. Okay, so what else? What else on that? 